juice. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. Right, so what we need to do now is a little bit of weathering. So, this is some very thin black I had mixed for my airbrush. I think that should be okay. For what we need, we don't need much, but that's probably too much. <clears throat> and just to be certain, what I'll do, I'll thin it just a little bit more. So all this is, is basically uh, a very small part of black acrylic, mainly water and a little bit of um, dish soap, whatever you want to call it, washing up liquid, um, not washing up liquid, so sorry, um, windoline, the sprayable kind. So I hope you can see this, I'm just going to put it where I think would be dirty. It's called weathering for a reason. Because of the weather. So we'll just pop it on randomly. I want to just catch if I can more on one corner in there between those um, and, the, and the others. You can see that. Now, because the paint we put on before was in a, um, it's like a matte paint, it's probably gonna, gonna, <laughs> going to um, soak it up more than uh, standard paint would. However, I'm just gonna get some tissue. A rub. <clears throat> That's fine. See, you can't strive for perfection when you're doing weathering because nature's not like that. It doesn't work that way. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll get the other side done the same. If we can, I'll try and do this a bit more. Uh, so you can see, I'll go this side this time. That's quite literally all I'm doing. I'll take it across the top there. Because again, random is always best when it comes to weathering. See how that's naturally just running down there? You could actually just let that run. Way too much on, as it were. Let it run. Even more natural. But it does make a considerable more mess. Considerable amount <laughs> more mess. You know, I'm not going to go crazy because I just want it weathered. I don't want to. Oops change the colour of the whole thing. <clears throat> Again, just dragging down because water would have run down. If you drop any you can, as you can see, pick it back up on your tissue and just wipe it around. It doesn't need to be amazing. It's already soaking in there. You can just do this with a sponge. <clears throat> just dip your cloth in very gently. As I say, drag down. The more random it is, the better. I'm not the best at weathering. There's a lot of people on YouTube far far better than me at this but I think 
for the moment at least that will do. Now you see I don't want to do anything here because the random colours just look like weathering anyway. Now I could add more to that. I don't think it needs it, I really don't. So what I might do is put a little bit underneath there. where the damp collects so it's dirt moss etc and again it doesn't need to be perfect but it's a lot better if it isn't let's put a little bit on the front as well just in this these corners here underneath. I think that'll be fine. Super! <clears throat> so that's that bit done. We've got to get the, the uh, inside of this painted. Um, so I can't leave it white. I think we're just going to use some, uh, probably some burnt umber for that. Okay, so like I said, I mean I was going to paint the inside of this black. However, um, I think a little bit too much. We do need some brown, it is wood. Um, and I did say, because you wouldn't see it um, inside, wouldn't matter, but it matters to me. It's been bothering me. So I thought, yes, we'll just uh, get on and do it. This uh, burnt umber. Burnt umber. Nothing fancy, just very basic um, burnt umber acrylic paint. Right, so we'll make a start on that. <clears throat> and you can see what I'm doing. It's not rocket science, I'm quite literally just going to whack some paint around inside. Again, perfection not required. Because again, it's not something that's going to be seen. So rather than bore you with this, I'll get on with this and we'll come back when I've done it. Right, so I only just finished that. Um, not dry yet, um, but it makes a difference. It, it, it's true what they say it is in the detail. You can't actually see it in there. I've tried to keep the brush strokes. I've not done the top section, there's no point. Um, downwards, all downwards to the, at a glance, look like you can see those strokes that wood grain hopefully and when you put that back down and look through it makes a difference again again not the best view but you kind of get an idea the paint is still wet but it's darkened it inside as it should be now so as you go through there as far as I'm aware there was no lights in there um, so it should be dark and again once the Thing is lower it looks a lot more realistic there we are with the realistic scenery of the washing machine in the foreground which is where they were headed towards the washing machine she thought more washing stayed off and crashed through there not really you've seen the film so I think that's okay again I'm not the best weathery person um, but it does look like it doesn't look new anymore like it did before uh, which is always a plus because that was the plan and again rough spots down here darkened again nature would have done that anyway so there we are even from this angle having painted that brown interior look how, how much better that looks looking from here so you can't see inside and the darkness of the actual wooden bridge itself and the darkness of the interior that is so much better of course the exit hole with the Volvo 245 crash through and again down here nice and dark as it would be again towards the crash side just there so there you go, 
and it's now starting to look like what we were hoping it was going to be. Again, still a long way to go, but uh, steps forward all the time, always moving forward, it's what I always see. But it's looking so much more like the actual thing, I think. I think the photograph we worked from is something along the lines of there. So next stage, while that's drying, we need to give some paint to these sections here, which would of course be the concrete um, support, I'm going to say, for the bridge. So I'm just going to paint them with a simple um, grey colour. And this is called, oddly enough, you can see that, mineral stone because we do need it to be a stone colour. I'm just trying to get a lucky focus. <clears throat> so it's going to paint over that just around the edges and such. I'm not going to be too worried about catching the sides because we're going to, we're going to grass over all this shortly. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be relatively careful, I'm not, to, not too slapdash, but if I catch the sides, it's, it's no big, there's no loss. So, give us a bit of a stir before I started. That would have been a good idea. There we are, that's stirred now. And we'll just see, and I've put some um, well, grouts really, grout filler well, on the bottom there to fill in the hole that was at the bottom. Um, but that also adds a kind of rocky texture to where it was put in, which is fine. All. Really, really simple process. Again, the bridge will be sitting on top of this. I don't need to do any of this top section. I could do if it starts to bother me. But it probably will, but uh, for the moment, we're just doing this section. <laughs> Super, it's really straightforward. You know, there's no rocket science or geniality bits of that is bothering me, <laughs> and you kind of knew it would. Just going to do those sides, I'm going to purposely not <laughs> fill all that in just to get my OCD going cranky. I'll probably come back to it later and do it. So. That's that side, that's all it's going to be. I'm going to do the other side and then I'll come back again. There we are, that's both sides done. Obviously this is giving the impression of the edges um, where the concrete slab would have been sunk into the bank on both sides. Obviously I'm going to put you the details. Concrete foundation and then set that set on there so to take the weight. So that's the, those two done. And uh, we can now start. I think we're going to put some. I don't know they put some flocking on first or not. I'll have to have a look. Right. Um, I'm going to put some PVA on there now. Start adding some ground coverage. Uh, not necessarily static grass at this point. Ooh, that's important. Um, but I do make my own ground cover, foliage, flock, etc. It's all thanks to the railway people. If you watch any of their videos on YouTube, I'll show you how to make this kind of stuff. It's really, really important to know. So I've got various colors because nature is like that. As random as you like. And some lighter colors. And I've also <coughs> made some, um, I believe it's called flock foliage. So I've got some clump, clump foliage. Again, all homemade, just for small bushes, etc. And of course, I've got a little more, some more fine foliage. So I'm probably going to mix some of this up, some of it together. I want to get the ground cover first. Uh, I've just got to choose. 
which I'm going to use. But it's not meant to rhyme, but there you are. First of all, I think we'll make a start and just get some PVA on the go. So again, not rocket science. I say that a lot, don't you? <laughs> We're quite literally just going to get a lot of our PVA glue all over everything, really. I mean, if we have to come back and put some more on to make it either, that's exactly what we will do. I'm going to try and avoid these road sections uh, for obvious reasons, because I don't want to get grass or whatever on there. So we'll just start off with this. Whoops. You think that was too much, wouldn't you? <laughs> but honestly, a lot of this will, in fact, soak in. This is just regular polystyrene. And if you go to people like Luke Town, what a what a what a diorama wrist, if that's an actual word. So realistic, realism is unbelievable, and um, his techniques are superb. Man has patience of an angel. If he must have <laughs> for the time and effort he puts in, he deserves <clears throat> all the praise he can get. You know, I don't know him personally, and uh, he's not sponsoring me. Um, I just genuinely feel wow, the realism levels are stunning. I advise you to have a search round for Luke Townsend. Boulder Creek Railway, superb. <clears throat> anyway, moving on with our menial <laughs> diorama in comparison. So, like I said, just PVA everywhere. Helps to seal the polystyrene. And of course it gives ground cover lock etc something to stick to which is uh, exactly what we need at this point I'm not too worried about what falls off down the, the, the sides here because again more coverage to go on there which uh, we'll work out as we go along That's it, super. I mean, you don't need it, it's best not to let it dry. Yeah, that I have, I have found personally. Uh, as I say, I'll probably mix colours because I feel that's probably the best way to go. Uh, start starting with the dark. This is a very messy process. So, if you're going to do this, please be aware you will make a mess. So, if your other half's not with you on this one, uh, do it when she's out, make sure you clean up before she comes back. <laughs> well, of course, if she's happy to do so, she can help you and advise you on the way. Here we are, literally just sprinkles. Again, random as can be, best way, because that's what nature is. Pretty random. <clears throat> so we may do the foliage afterwards, I don't want too much of the light, light. it's just for high, literally for highlights. So I made all this myself. There's many, many tutorials out there on how to make your own round cover. There's so many really good creators out there. To watch and get their idea on what's best to do. So again, all coming together quite nicely, <coughs> coverage wise. Just need to find a middle tone. We'll start the dark was on first, obviously. Mid tones afterwards. Because we will be putting some static grass on there. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not organised, I'm not, I've not written this down or planned it in any way. Because I keep saying 
nature doesn't work that way. But no, it won't all stick. Yes, you will get some on your paint. That's all okay. Because, you know, again, what nature, well, usually it's a mess on my grass and my ground coverage has gone on. When my water's going to go, that's fine because it just looks like mold. Or in fact, moss. I say this will make a heck of a mess. So I'm just going to brush up onto the bed there because the gravity didn't get it. There will be excess, quite a lot of it. I just want some more on the end there. That's a nice light. Be nice if there's any light stuff down there. Pat it on, stick it on, throw it on, brush it on, whatever works for you. Just around the edges. Again, not worried about the edges. I will be putting a border on there afterwards. There we are. For the moment at least, that's this side done. I might let that dry before I put any other kind of foliage on it. I need to do the other side, so I won't bore you with the same technique on the other side. So for now, I'll do the other side and I'll come back. Okay, let your wife know, or your partner know, this is the kind of mess you're going to end up with. Now all we've done is, we've finished coating both sides of the, uh, the bridge. And as it dries, obviously there's a lot of surplus on there, so you need to tap that off. My intention was to keep it on this red mat. Clearly, some of that worked, but the rest of it just goes everywhere. It's all over the floor, major cleanup required. So just make sure they know you're going to do that. Um, don't throw this away. Find yourself a little tub because this is already nice and mixed colours, which you need to keep for a future diorama. There we are, that's with both sides done. It's not complete. Both sides have been covered. We've made lots of mess, so we just need to leave that to dry um, before we add any more. We can, however, if you wish, continue and do the roadway. Um, I'll have a look and see what I've got for that. Okay, just a bit of, uh, I mean, people haven't always got this kind of stuff on hand. You can, however, that's the wife or partner first, pick some up from the supermarket if you're not gonna pinch it out of the cupboard. You can use everyday things like this. That makes fabulous ground coverage. If you're gonna do that, there's lots of things. Look around, not necessarily from this, this brand here. Look around your local supermarket for spices and herbs. Look at that, great ground coverage. All you've got to remember is to cover it uh, or spray it over with some watered down PVA afterwards or some isopropanol alcohol. Um, because obviously it's, it's real stuff and it, you don't want it to rot. Okay, now my little collection. I collect, <laughs> I collect bits all the time. Um, people tend to give me things as well. Can you use this, Rob? Oh yeah. A friend of mine gave me some bits that he got. Oops, off a friend of his. <coughs> um, but he, he doesn't use this kind of thing, so obviously he gave it to me. So I'm just gonna try some on this side first. This is like a... A very fine gravel. Um, again, from the model railway community, I have a lot of thanks to tutorials and information. And YouTube is a wonderful, wonderful place for information. So again, this is just like a fine gravel, like I said. So I'm just going to make an attempt to sprinkle it. Like a nice roadway gravel. The correct terminology is oh, you're going to put, intentionally put too much on, <clears throat> and then it's going to get an other brush to kind of push it around a bit, bully it a bit. <laughs> 
to get it to go where I need it. Again, I really don't want to get it all over the place, but it doesn't really matter if you do. Because it's a road at the end of the day. You know, and the edging, unless there's a pavement, it is not going to be perfect. So again, just to outline where the road is. Push it, pat it, dab it, whatever. Now you should really seal this with some, again, watered down PVA. When it's all done, um, or some isopropanol uh, mix. So again, that side done, I'm gonna do the other side. <coughs> so, same as before, sprinkle it on. More than you need is better, don't skimp. I mean, you can make this stuff yourself again. Many, many fabulous tutorials um, on a tube of you <laughs> to show you how to do such things. Um, you can even use you know, real dirt and dust from your, your actual back garden. A lot, lot of the uh, diorama people do. I don't have soil. <clears throat> in my garden, for the most part, my garden, like a backyard, it's like completely all over. I'm not a god. <laughs> my good lady will tell you that. Um, so again, there we go. Nice spread out. I was going to say spread it, spread it. We'll just pat that down. So much on there that it's dry to touch but obviously it's not dry underneath so you're gonna to have to leave this for all that lovely pva to dry out before we can move on anymore with that so there we are um after a major clean up mess everywhere believe me it ended up on my cooker's hob i have no idea how that happened Anyway, there it is. It's not quite dry yet. But it gives you a better idea of where we're going with that. So there we are, we've achieved quite a bit this time. We've um, done the weathering on the roof. We've done the painting on the inside of the bridge cover itself. So that looks nice now, it all matches in. And we've done a lot of the uh, ground cover. Um, that's got a dry now before we can move on any further so i think we're going to leave it there so again thanks for watching thanks for subscribing don't forget to press that like button that really makes a difference and you can still buy me a coffee if you really want to i'll leave a link in the description and we'll just have one final look of where we've got so far and i'll see you next time